Today, let's take a look at how to paint this frog on a vintage dictionary page. And the fun thing is, you can create this painting on any kind of old paper, sheet music, an old book, a postcard. Have fun with it. Let's take a look at the paper and the paints. I found this public domain reference photo on pixabay.com. The paper's from an old dictionary, and it's important to me to use music and books in the public domain to respect copyright laws. This older paper tends to be off-white or tan or brownish, and I've learned that this kind of paper gets along best with watercolors rather than the white paper that we use today like computer paper, which doesn't accept water well, it just automatically wrinkles. But when you pick up just a little bit of color on your barely damp brush and gently apply thin layers of color, you can do really nice things on this old paper. For this painting, I used Windsor and Newton colors, Lamp Black, Windsor Lemon, Burnt Sienna, Payne's Gray, and a little bit of Permanent Rose. I find it helpful to have a specific size in mind when planning a painting, even before creating the drawing. For this frog, I'll use this mat which has a three and a quarter by four and a half inch opening. I created the drawing on tracing paper with a mechanical pencil, and I used a piece of graphite paper to transfer the drawing to the dictionary page. And now, let's move into the painting. First, I created a gray map of what will be the darkest parts, as well as where I'd like to see contour and inward curve. I'm using a waterproof sepia pen to establish what will be the absolute darkest parts, the eye and a bit of the nostril. This will help me to keep track of where these features are, and the ink will stay in place because it's waterproof. Next, we're going to lay in gray using lamp black. I've learned that lamp black gets along well with this old paper. It stays in place when further layers are applied, and the edges are easy to soften. The idea is to create the beginnings of contour, because darker values make it look like that part of a shape is moving away from us. So if we would apply a pale gray, it will eventually appear to be a darker green or a darker brown, depending on the color we place over it. So I'm thinking about places where I'd like to create the impression of inward curve. You want to make sure your brush is clean and barely damp when picking up color and when softening so that you can avoid the paper becoming too wet because if the paper becomes wet, it wrinkles. And I'm excited to see how this will appear when we place layers of, of green over it. I also like that as we go around the edge, it will help the frog to stand out from all of this black text. Look at what we've created. We've got a pale gray map of what will be the darker values, the darker greens, the darker browns. And it's already dry, so let's move into the first layers of green. I did some experimenting before moving into the painting, and I found that when you mix Payne's Gray and Windsor Lemon, you can create all kinds of greens. I'll create a green mix of Payne's Gray and Windsor Lemon on the palette. More gray will create a darker green. More yellow will create a brighter green. So in this step, we're going to establish dark greens, mid greens, and light greens everywhere in this frog. It's helpful to break the frog down into smaller parts. Focus on one area at a time. For each section or each part, I'll begin by laying in what will be the darkest green. And that previous layer of lamp black will enhance the color. It will help to create an even darker green. Then pick up a lighter green that contains more yellow in the mix and lay it over and a little past that dark green. 
and bring in an even lighter green. The goal is to establish the darker greens first and little by little lighter values of green. This will help to create the impression that the darker values are curving away from us and lighter values make it look like that part of the shape is coming towards us. And we want to create a smooth transition from dark to mid-tone to light green. And I'll continue to follow that formula, dark, mid-tone, light, as I move around the frog. When the color dries, you can go back in and go a little darker where you think is needed, reinforce the lightest values, reinforce the mid-tones using a very gentle touch. We've got the greens in place, and looking at the reference photo, I'm also seeing some browns. This is a mix of Payne's gray and burnt sienna. Do you see how that creates a darker brown? Lay in some of that dark brown first. And then a lighter value of that same brown mix, but a thinner consistency. And I'll continue to gently apply darker or lighter brown using the photo as a guide. A thicker consistency will create darker values and thinner will become lighter. Now let's do something with the colors in the stem. How about a bit of burnt sienna? The color appears different on the paper, a little darker due to that previous layer of lamp black and that was the plan. Gently apply a thin layer of color and soften the edge with your barely damp brush. And there it is. We've established the greens and browns while reinforcing the impression of contour. At this point, I would take a break. Stop looking at the painting for a while. Upon returning, you'll see with fresh eyes and we'll make final refinements. Let's take a look at how we can refine and finish this painting. Look at your painting and ask yourself, does anything appear strange or not quite right? Does anything need to go darker? Would you like to reinforce inward curve? Do you see abrupt transitions in value or color, such as right here? Do you see the hard edge of that darker green? And then it moves abruptly into the lighter green. Here are the refinements I'll make to this painting. We've got a lot of green and brown in place. I'd like to add some interest, and I'll apply some permanent rose to the stem. Feel free to use your favorite pink or red. Keep the application thin until you see if you like it. When it's dry, there's another layer of a different color coming. I'll lay some of that color in the throat. I like how the pink appears different depending on the color underneath. And now, how about some yellow? Make sure the previous layers are completely dry and use a gentle touch. Do you see how the yellow changes the character of the previous colors? If you'd like to take lines or shapes darker, use a dark mix of Payne's Gray and Burnt Sienna and a gentle touch to avoid lifting previous layers of color. Remember that I had mentioned that abrupt transition from dark to light? Pick up a darker green, the consistency of thin cream, and gently touch in little dots of color, creating a smoother transition from dark to lighter green. Smooth with your barely damp brush. And you can do this anywhere that you'd like to see smoother transitions in color and value, or if you'd like to create some textures. Finally, if you'd like to take some areas even darker, return to your waterproof ink pen to reinforce edges, take parts of the eye darker, anywhere that you think is needed. And there it is. This painting is finished, and here's how it looks inside a frame. And if you'd like to give it a try, find a piece of vintage paper. Don't use the modern white paper because it will wrinkle. But 
any other old paper should work for you. Use just a little bit of color on your barely damp brush. And if you need some extra help, I invite you to come on over to our watercolor school, watch the tutorial in real time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.